What sort of mirror does a telescope use to focus light? Is it a spherical concave mirror, an elliptical concave mirror, a parabolic concave mirror, or a plane mirror? Well, let's go through our options. We'll start off with a spherical concave mirror. Now, it turns out spherical mirrors cannot focus parallel rays of light to a single focus. The rays of light do still converge, but they'll rarely ever hit the single focus. So in what circumstances do they get to a single focus? Let's consider a spherical mirror. We can see that if we have a light source right in the middle, then light rays coming out from that will strike the mirror perpendicular to the surface of the mirror. That means they'll be reflected in exactly the same direction. So this is the only case in which a light source can be reflected by a spherical mirror into a single focus if the light source is at the location of the focus. So our answer is not A because we can't build a mirror around the star that we're trying to look at. Alright, how about B? An elliptical concave mirror. Now in this case, the elliptical mirror focuses the light waves in a slightly different way. If we have an ellipse and we're good at maths, then we'll know that an ellipse has two different focuses. In a sphere, the focuses are so close together that they've become one focus. So if we have an elliptical mirror, then any light that's emitted from one focus will bounce off the elliptical mirror and reach the other focus. And this will happen no matter where on the surface we decide to bounce off from. So this means that if we could have one of the focuses of the ellipse at the star that we're looking at, then sure, we'd be able to focus the light. The problem is, stars are so far away that we can assume that their distance is practically infinity. And if we have an ellipse where the two focuses are an infinite distance apart, it turns out that we don't have an ellipse at all. We've got a special case. What exactly does that special case look like? Well, we'll learn in a moment. First of all, I'll just put down any doubts you might have about the mirror not being concave and tell you that it is not, in fact, a plane mirror. A plane mirror does not focus parallel rays of light. Our last option then is a parabolic concave mirror. Now I mentioned before that an ellipse that is an infinite length long is a special case of an ellipse. That's because if we look at the region near one focus of the ellipse, we can see that it is in fact identical to a parabola. So if we have a parabolic concave mirror, that's the same as having an ellipse that will focus light coming from infinity to the other focus of the ellipse. So in a parabolic concave mirror, we don't have another focus. That focus is at infinity. Instead, we have just one focus close to the mirror, and this is the one that we're interested in. So in this case, parabolic mirror will focus rays of light to a particular point, so long as those rays are parallel. Question 12. Which of these is an example of a convex mirror? All right, let's go through them, shall we? A bathroom mirror. Well, I imagine that if you wanted to look at yourself in a bathroom mirror, you'd want an accurate reflection of what you look like. If you don't want the reflection to be distorted at all, that means that you need a plane mirror. A mirror that's completely flat and not curved. Ah, oh, but hang on, I can hear you say. What about a mirror for makeup or a mirror for shaving? In that case, we'd want the reflection to be bigger than the actual object. Ah, uh, but if that were the case, then we wouldn't have a convex mirror. We would have a concave mirror. How about C? A mirror used in a microscope to focus on small objects. Well, first of all, microscopes tend to use lenses rather than mirrors. But even if they did use a mirror for magnification, they would need a concave mirror if they wanted to make an object look bigger. A convex mirror will only make objects look smaller. B. A dentist's mirror for examining a patient's teeth. Once again, the dentist doesn't want the teeth to look smaller, so they won't use a convex mirror. Instead, they'll use a concave mirror, because a concave mirror can provide a magnification of the image. Our last option then is A. A car's rear view mirror. And this is in fact the correct answer. Convex mirrors shrink objects, they make objects seem smaller, which means that you can see more of a field, in the, a field of view in their mirror than you can with your normal eyes, or with a plane mirror. So if we have a convex mirror in the car's rear view mirror, 
it means the objects reflected look smaller, therefore more distant, but it also means that we can see a wider field of view than if we didn't have it. So A is the correct answer. Question 13. What sort of mirror is this? What features of this sort of mirror does it show? Can you tell what this is a picture of? It's the helmet of an astronaut. Ignore the reflection in the middle of the picture for a moment and concentrate just on the edges. This is the shoulder of the astronaut and the side of his head is up here, the top of it being at the top of the picture. The big reflective thing in the middle is the helmet of the astronaut. It's got its sun visor up so that it reflects all the sunshine, as well as the mirror with, with which he's taking a photo of himself. The, the astronaut's helmet is in fact a convex mirror because it bulges outward. So the second part of the, part of the question asks, what features of this sort of mirror does it show? Well, let's look at the reflection inside. If we look at the size of, for example, the astronaut's shoulders or arms, they seem quite small compared to what we can see in the rest of the picture. So we can see that convex mirrors will reflect a wider field of view in which the objects seem smaller than they originally were. Question 14. The dot in this diagram, over here, is a source of light. Draw the rays of light that reflect from the parabolic mirror. So in order to answer this sort of question, we're going to need to show that we understand what will happen for light coming out in all directions. We can't just draw a single light ray and call it a day. It's a much better idea to draw a number of light rays all coming out and hitting different points of the mirror. So that might look something like this. Now there are two different ways from here that we can go to solve this question. The first way that we can solve it is by carefully drawing normals to each point where the light rays that we've drawn strike the parabolic mirror. And so in that case, we'd be drawing a normal to the circle, uh, a normal to the curve at each point, and uh, the normal will of course be perpendicular to the mirror, and then measuring the angle of incidence, and making sure it's equal to the angle of reflection, which will look something like that. Then we could do the same method for each one of the rays of light that we've produced. And if we do that, then we can prove what we sort of already know about parabolic mirrors. That is, if they have a particular focus that's emitting light, then all of the emitted light will turn into parallel lines. So that will look something like this. We can see that for any one of these beams of light, the angle of reflection between this line and the parabola will be equal to the angle of incidence between the source of light and the parabola itself. Question 15. The mirrors of cars often display the warning, objects in mirror are closer than they appear. We can see that at the bottom of this side mirror in a screen from a movie. So why is this? Why do they require this warning? Well, the answer of course is because the mirror is not a plane mirror. In a plane mirror, the reflected objects always seem exactly the same size as they are in real life. In convex mirrors, we have something a little different happening. Convex mirrors uh, widen the field of view of the driver. They reflect a wider area than a plane mirror. What this means is that objects in this wider area seem smaller. And our brain says if objects are smaller, they must be further away. So when we see objects in a convex mirror, our brain thinks that they are further away than they really are. And this is what makes it so hard to judge distance when looking into a convex mirror. Hence, we need to have a warning on car mirrors saying that objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. So that's the end of the questions. In this section, we've talked about some of the uses of concave and convex mirrors. Convex mirrors to provide a wider field of view and concave mirrors to produce magnification.